Lots of content creators have done the right thing and left Premiere Pro for Final Cut, but their videos are still looking amateur because of a whole bunch of just small editing choices. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through 10 simple ways to instantly level up the production quality of your videos in Final Cut Pro. These tips are all designed to be really practical, fast to apply, and will fit any editing style. And a big thanks to Motion VFX for partnering with this video. Okay, so the first tip I wanna show you is adding a LUT. Now, if you're not familiar with LUTs, think of them basically is kind of like filters for your video like when you add a filter to your photos on Instagram and it can be a really great way to just make your videos look more unique as well as making them look a little bit more cinematic so this is a bunch of footage from a recent trip that I went on now to add a lot the first thing I'll do is add an adjustment layer so if you go to your titles and generators tab here make sure titles is selected and then just search for adjustment and then adjustment layer will pop up. Drag that onto your footage. We zoom in You can see it's quite small. We could just drag that out so it covers more of our content. And then from there, we go to our effects tab right here and just search LUT. You're gonna have this one here, custom LUT. So just drag that onto your adjustment layer and then in your inspector window, you're gonna have this appear. Select the drop down, and from here you can go choose custom LUT and you can navigate to the LUT on your Mac. Now there's heaps of places that you can get LUTs. I've got a free one. I'll leave it in the description if you're interested. But once you've downloaded it, just find it in Finder using choose custom LUT and then it will appear here. So for me, I've already got my LUT loaded right here and boom. As you can see, it's added this filter to my footage, which has completely changed the look of it. Now for me, it's a little bit intense. So I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit and here you can do that with this mix slider. So zero turns it all the way off and then 100 turns it all the way on. So I usually like it somewhere around the sort of 75% mark. So you can see if I turn it on and off using V, you can see the difference that it makes to the footage. It really changes and enhances the look. If I drag this adjustment layer across my entire video, it's now applied across the entire timeline. It's just a really easy way to make your videos pop. Okay, tip number two is adding subtle camera movements to static shots. Typically, I film my videos in my studio like this, and it's just a static talking head A-roll shot. We can actually spice it up and make it a bit more interesting with a completely free plugin. So again, I'm just gonna go to my titles and generators tab, type in MCAM. We've got MCAM rig right here. This is made by Motion VFX. I believe it's actually now called custom camera movement, but it's completely free. Just drag and drop it onto your footage. And now if I play this section of my footage back, you can see it adds this dynamic zoom. So it kind of simulates a camera zoom, but just all within your editor. So you don't have to worry about doing it in your camera. From here, I adjust it just using the inspector window again. I usually just turn off that blur. So when it zooms in, it doesn't blur on me like that. And then I'll change the actual zoom level. So that's a camera angle of view. So I'll just put it somewhere a bit more subtle like this. You can move the zoom point to somewhere a bit more natural around there. Now when I play this back, you can see it looks heaps more natural. And that just adds a bit more visual interest to a standard A-roll talking headshot like this. Really simple, but really effective. Okay, while we're still in this video, let's talk a bit about lower thirds. If you aren't familiar with that term, it's basically just overlaid text and you can add the default with just control T. That adds this basic title like this. So I can change this, customize it. I can move it around if I want, but that looks pretty boring. This is something that we can easily level up. So you can download and install a whole bunch of lower thirds like this that are already like heaps better than the default Final Cut Pro ones. However, this is where I use the Design Studio from Motion VFX who are partnering with today's video. Design Studio is a subscription that gives you access to thousands of really high quality, polished and modern lower thirds and titles that you can customize yourself inside Final Cut Pro without having to create everything from scratch. Plus you get thousands of motion design elements Elements, including transitions, effects, templates, an AI captions tool, and more. And right now they're running their biggest sale of the year called the Final Price Cut. You can get up to 50% off during their store-wide Black Weeks sale. That includes weekly flash sales where five new products drop each Monday with discounts up to 50%. Plus you can get 15% off Cine Studio and Design Studio subscriptions with no code needed. Plus you can even get 30% off their perpetual plugins using the code FINAL. And you can use Use these in Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Premiere Pro if you're still using it. So don't miss out. The sales end very soon on December 7. There's a link in the description below, so go and check it out. So once you've got a Design Studio subscription, you can install this extension right here called M Extension. And then right here within Final Cut Pro, you'll have access to all of these thousands of design elements. So here's just a few. You've probably seen these used in my other videos. Drag and drop it onto your timeline. Close the extension. And then if I play this back, you can see 
It's super high quality. It's got animated cursors. And again, you can move it around and it's super customizable. You can change colors. You can change the text. I use these all the time and it's a great way to level up the quality of your videos. Okay, so tip number four is adding micro animations to your graphics. This is actually an easy way to spice up more basic titles. So I've got this little, don't forget to subscribe notification. I'm gonna move it down to here. And currently it just cuts straight into my video, which is not very pretty. So I'm gonna to go to my transitions tab and I'm gonna type in slide. This is actually one of my most used transitions. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that onto my title. And now if I play this back, it's gonna slide into the video. It's already looking better, but it's sliding in the wrong direction. I want it to slide in from this side of the video. So if I click on the actual transition, I can go up here to my inspector and then slide in direction from the left. Now if I play this back, that slides in from the left, looks great. I might even change this to sliding in from the bottom. So if we go up, now I'm gonna play it back, it's even more subtle. And it just takes your graphics to that next level. It looks so much more professional like this rather than just cutting in and out. We could do the same thing at the very end. So I'm gonna change this to slide out and then I want it to slide down. So now at the end, it just slides out like that. Looks super pro and it's super simple. Tip number five is to actually choose better fonts. So by default, your Mac will come with a whole bunch of very basic and kind of boring fonts. You know, stuff like this that just doesn't look that great. It's not very compelling. But if you didn't know, you can actually install much more interesting and exciting fonts like this. My personal favorite, which I use all the time, is Lemon Milk. And if you don't know where to get fonts, I highly recommend checking out defont.com. There's so many free fonts on here that actually look amazing. Double check their usage rights. Generally, they're free for personal use, but pretty much any type of font that you can think of, you'll be able to find it under font. And you can find something that really suits your particular content style. Download, install it, and use it, and it will really help make your content look that much better. Okay, number six, use better transitions that aren't just cross dissolves. So I've seen a lot of people by default, they just use the default transition, which is just a crossfade like this. Now it just looks kind of tacky. We can make it look way better. Now there's a few different ways you can go about it. Final Cut Pro already has a bunch of transitions already installed, like that slide transition that I just showed you. So you can apply this and it will look a bit better than a cross dissolve, but this isn't quite the right vibe that I'm going for in my videos. So again, you can go online and download a whole bunch of transitions from different sources. There's again, free and paid ones. But for me, I again, just use Motion VFX. So they've got heaps of really high quality transitions that you can use. So I might use something kind of like this one. It's a very quick transition. I'm just going to drag that onto my footage. Now, if I play this back, as you can see, it's this really quick flash. And in my experience, generally quicker transitions are better than slower ones. You don't want your transitions to be too distracting, but something like this can just make your content look heaps more professional. Okay, tip number seven is to sync your cuts to your music beats. If you've got a backing track with music, like this particular short form clip that I made, you'll find that your content actually looks more professional if you cut on music beats. Now, let me show you particularly this spot here. especially for fast paced edits like this, it's always gonna look better than if these are all slightly out of sync, for example. So let me show you, if I just take that out of sync and play this back. It just doesn't work quite as well. Now, a quick hack for syncing to the beat of a track, use the M key for marker. So if I play this back, I'm just gonna tap the M key every time I hear the beat. And then just by doing that, you've added all these little individual markers that you can easily line your footage up with and make your cuts on. Okay, next up is a really big one. This is one that I see heaps of people do all the time and it's a really easy fix. And that is just having amateur framing. Now, if I place myself here in the frame, this is an example of amateur framing, the same as here or even somewhere like here. Now, if I move back to the center, you can probably already tell this just looks better. You might not be able to tell why it looks better, but it just kind of does. And one of the easiest ways to fix this is using what's called the rule of thirds. If you haven't heard of this before, just imagine a grid on your frame with one, two, three sections from top to bottom, and then one, two, three sections from left to right. I won't go into too much detail, but basically you wanna keep important parts of your image on the actual third lines. A really easy example with a roll like this is to always keep your eye level on the top third line because it just looks the most natural. If you have your eye level above that third line like this, it's just gonna look a bit weird. You're gonna have your head cut off. If it's below the 
third line, it's still gonna look weird. It's still gonna look out of place. And then for a roll like this, just keep yourself centered right in the center of the image. If you're slightly off like this, it's gonna look a bit weird. And you can always easily just scale and move your image in post if you filmed it a little bit off. Okay, tip number nine is using masking to add layering to your content. So here's a basic example. I posted a YouTube short every day for the past three months. So as you can see, I've got these three kind of layers in my frame. I've got the front layer where I've got these calendar pop-ups, the second layer where I've got myself, and then a third layer that seems like it's sitting behind me in the frame. And it's actually really easy to do. You just need to get your A-roll clip. So let's just use this clip here, for example. And I'm just gonna duplicate it holding option. So I'm gonna duplicate that clip, put it on top of itself. I'm just gonna make sure it's muted. And then I'm gonna search for in our effects tab, the magnetic mask. I'm going to drag this not onto my timeline, but onto my preview window. And if I drag it over myself, as you can see, it highlights me. So I let go. I'm just going to click just a few other spots on my body, just so it knows for sure that this is the area that I want it to select. And I also want it to select my chair back here. So I'm just going to include that as well. And then I'm just going to hit analyze. Now just give it a few seconds. And as you can see, it's going to analyze the entire clip and keep me selected. And once that's finished, I'm just going to hit done. Now you don't see anything different, right? But if I disable this bottom clip, you'll see that it's cut me out completely from the background. This is super powerful. You can do so many different things with masking. If we just use the example of this short form clip that I animated into the background, I just need to put it in between my bottom layer where the background is and my top layer, which has the background removed. And then just like that, it looks like it's sitting behind me in the frame. You can do this with text, graphics, videos, anything you want. Okay, last but not least is adding a little bit of light sound design. This can really level up your content. So for example, if you go back to this basic subscribe notification, it's fine. We've definitely improved it with that animation, but we can make it even better with some basic sound design. And that just means adding sound effects basically. So I'm gonna get a little whoosh sound. I think this one will work well. So I'm gonna drag that onto my timeline. And of course I want this little whoosh to start when the actual animation pops up. So it's about there. I'm just going to add a little marker so I can see exactly where it is. And then I'm going to move the audio to that exact spot. Now if I play this back, using AI to cut up my long form. You can see it just makes it that much more dynamic. Experimented with using AI to cut up my long form like content. that. And it even makes it more noticeable because you hear an audible cue. Again, you can do that with all sorts of things with graphics, with animations, but just layering in some little simple basic sound effects like that can make a huge difference. So there you go. I hope that helped. Just pick maybe one, two or three of these different techniques and give them a go in your next video and see how you find it, see how it levels up your content. And let me know in the comments if there's any of these tips that you'd like me to go a bit more in depth in and maybe do a full in depth video on. And don't forget to take advantage of Motion VFX final price cut sale, especially if you're looking at the Design Studio or Cine Studio subscription plans. It's the best pricing they have all year, so don't miss out. The link is down in the description. In the meantime, if you're looking for more Final Cut Pro tutorials. I've got a whole bunch here that will really help you level up your videos.